large predatory animal, like the dinosaurs, they can become over-specialised so that when there is a catastrophe and there is a great upheaval in the sort of ecological balance, it's usually those over-specialised creatures which go first. Um, it's these generalist type of organisms which tend to be much better at coping with these types of uh, overall ecological shifts. At the critical moment when the Ice Age struck, we too were near the bottom of the food chain, a scavenger, a nobody like the humble Peripetus. But as the world changed, our weakness became our strength and saw us through the hard times. In the evolutionary arms race, the Ice Age mass extinction was a lucky break. The mollusks happened to be at the top of the pile when it collapsed. The effect was to remove them from the battlefield. But if we thought the field was open to us, we were in for a big surprise. With the super snails gone, an old adversary had risen again. The mega bugs were back. In the vaults of the Royal Ontario Museum lies evidence of a monster that terrorized the oceans. For Des Collins, this is one of the most important specimens in the building, a 420 million year old sea scorpion. A giant arthropod predator, longer than a man is tall, with eight inch serrated pincers capable of cutting through a human arm. Okay, let's get the head. <clears throat> Des believes this beast is a throwback to the predators of the Burgess Shale. After all this time, a hundred million years they've been sort of there biding their time and now suddenly they're back. And of course, th this is of course quite similar to, to uh, the Anomalocaris in the sense it's got claws and jaws. So they, it, it's, they're still using the same way of, 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 of attacking and, and, and tearing up its prey. Exactly the way that uh, Anomalocaris did. The evolutionary tables had turned full circle. The sea scorpions have developed of these gigantic sizes, and the arthropods have come back as the one, and they're contending, and they're in the, in the form of this guy would have, would, would have nothing would, have, would attack something like this. The bugs were once more king of the seas, and at this moment in time, 400 million years ago, it looked like they were bound to win the war. Yet they would soon be defeated for good and we would be victorious at last. But why? Because within every vertebrate lies a secret weapon, and every arthropod has a major hidden flaw. But they would only come to light in the final evolutionary battle, fought on a new battlefield, the land. Ironically, the seeds of our triumph and the arthropods' downfall were planted in the oceans half a billion years ago at the time of the Burgess Shale. Eager at that time to expand their empire and being the only group able to do it, the bugs took an inevitable but fatal step. While the arms race raged in the oceans, the first bug walked onto land just one small step, it was a giant leap for bug kind. But the new world that greeted them was a tough place to live, scoured by winds and burnt to a crisp by the sun. And what looked like a brave venture turned out to be the biggest mistake of their evolutionary lives. There are no fossils of these first pioneers, but Simon Brady wants to know what they looked like, how such a step was possible, and why it went so badly wrong. He has turned to modern computer graphics to unlock the secrets of bug body design. What we need to do in order to turn this into an insect is we need to get rid of these gills. The reason why the arthropods were the first to get onto land is because they had so many good pre-adaptations. They had a skeleton on the outside of their body which was like a spacesuit. It would shield them from the, the harsh environment of what life was like on land. 
500 million years ago. So they could uh, maintain all their body fluids um, and they, it also provided them with mechanical support in order that they could be able to move around. So that's 200%. Creatures like so these were the first ever insects destined to fill the earth with billions of descendants. But their dominance of the land would be short-lived because they had a design fault. Without the buoyancy of water to support them, their spacesuit body armor was just too heavy. It stopped them growing more than three feet tall. It's quite ironic that this spacesuit, which allowed them to colonize land much earlier, was ultimately limiting their type of uh, diversification and size that they could attain. For 130 million years, it didn't matter. There was no competition. But during that time, the Earth had changed. The first plants appeared, building up the planet's ozone layer. In this cooler world with its natural sunblock, creatures no longer needed a spacesuit to survive. 370 million years ago, the first vertebrates left the seas and came onto land. They brought with them a secret weapon that would change the balance of power forever. That weapon was our internal skeleton, a simple but highly effective framework. It allowed us to build bodies of overwhelming size and power. We could totally outgrow our armor-bound bug competitors. And in the arms race, more than anywhere, size mattered. For the bugs, there was nowhere to go but down, which meant downsizing. The insects, millipedes, spiders, and lobsters all went through a process of miniaturization. For those who refuse to follow, the end of the line lies here in the remote Cedarburg Mountains of South Africa. Two years ago, Cape Town geologist John Almond unearthed a bizarre set of footprints on one of these giant shale boulders. Simon Brady has come to see the evidence. Wow, that is amazing. Now, there she is. Very clear sets of impressions. John believes side. these prints were left by the largest bug that ever Ow. walked the earth. 270 million years ago. But sadly, mm. we've lost the right-hand margin. Now what we guess is if we had the complete foot impressions on this side, this distance there would be something like a meter. The trackway suggests the largest bug that ever lived was 10 feet long by three feet wide. But these footsteps also show that this freak was an evolutionary dead end, scratching out a living on a lake bed. On land, the reign of the megabugs had already ended. The only way in which these giant arthropods are clinging on to existence is in these specialized types of habitats where they're not competing with the vertebrates. So it's game over for the arthropods in terms of this race for dominance of the planet. This left all the big spaces on Earth to their giant competitors. By 250 million years ago, the third and final battle in the evolutionary arms race was over. Victorious, Pacaya's descendants would dominate the Earth. First, the great reptiles, the dinosaurs would rule. Then came the mammals, and finally,